Hello and welcome to the Azure Quick Kits video series. Today with my colleague Anna Root, we're going to talk about the new Azure Sentinel Security Events Data Connector, uh, the new AMA agent, and customized event logging. Hey everyone, this is Anna Root, and today we're going to talk about the new Security Events Connector in Microsoft Sentinel. With me, I have Mark, who is my friend from Canada, focused on security. Uh, Mark, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, and I'm a cloud security engineer working with the Fast Track team at Microsoft. Yeah, so you guys might have noticed over the past month that a new connector has popped up in Microsoft Central, and it says security events via AMA. A lot of people that I talk to ask me this question about what is AMA. Uh, Mark, did you have this question when you first saw this? Yes. So the AMA, or Azure Monitoring Agent, is a replacement for three agents, the Log Analytics Agent, the Diagnostic Extension, and the Linux Telegraph Agent. And the nice thing about this agent is it allows us to customize which events we're going to send up to Azure or up to the Log Analytics workspace. Uh, and this is a capability that we did not have before. So let's take a look. Right. So this would mean that no more collecting all application logs because you just need one event out of that. And uh, if you want to filter out stuff from this security event log as well, you can simply filter it out and collect only the stuff that you need. Yeah. Uh, the basic thing about AMA is that the resource has to be in Azure or you use Azure Arc to connect to your on-prem resources. So that is one thing that you should keep in mind before you consider an AMA deployment strategy. And uh, Yeah, that's a good catch and a good call out. So on-premise machines, you're saying have to be Arc enabled? Yep. But for VMware, but inside Azure itself, we don't need Arc. Yeah, absolutely. One important point to note is that the AMA agent can exist with the legacy MMA agent. Just remember to disable the MMA agent or remove it once you've got AMA installed so that you don't end up sending the logs twice. So you'll notice on screen that Anirudh is actually selecting the machine on which we're going to install the AMA agent. Very good point, Mark. As more and more people migrate from the MMA to AMA, uh, do not double consume the data. So here uh, you have an option to collect all security events the common security events, which are used for, for most detections, the minimal set, which is like the minimum security events that would you would need to write your detections. And you also have an option to customize it. And to customize it is where the power of uh, the AMA comes in. And you customize this by using XPath queries. But before we do that, I have a machine on which I have logged on. And I just want to make sure that we just look at the structure of an event in the event log. So 4624, let's open one of the most common event types. An event log is essentially an XML entry. So it simply means that there is a file somewhere that is collecting all this XML uh, record. So this is going to be the basis of uh, writing the XPath query to kind of customize what to collect. Let's look at a useful article. So this is the article that talks about the security events connector. And uh, this is how an XPath query looks like. What do you think about this article, Mark? This is a great reference document. It's an excellent place for customers to go to start understanding how to build XPath queries. Hey, Anirudh, you brought up a really good point about the maximum number of XPath statements we can have in a query. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, as it says, you can just write 20 expressions over here. So 20 expressions would mean that can have a maximum of 20 XPath queries. You know, there's a very useful article which is about auditing different types. This is just one page in that. A very common question that we get is that if there are 20 uh, queries that can be written, uh, how do you kind of include all the events over there? So let's answer that by showing an example of how we can create multiple events in a single XPath query. I think that that should be fair. Yeah, that should more or less do it. So the first thing we need to identify is the channel. And in that case, it's going to be security. If we take a look at the application logs, you're gonna see that the channel is application. So part one, security. Second is the word system, and system is gonna be the first element, and system is a consistent element across all Windows event logs. So we're always gonna use system. So the second element in our query is gonna be the event ID, which we can find here. And then the fourth piece we need is the text, which is what we're actually filtering on. Now, when we're building a query where we have multiple components, we're going to have to create another event ID and a second piece of text or a second text element and then put in the new number or the next number that we're going to be filtering on. 
one thing that I was wondering, Mark, uh, do I really, when I create this, do I really need to remember uh, which log I clicked on or how do I fetch the name of the log from this XML view? It's the value of the channel attribute, so in our case, security, that actually shows you the name of the log file. And that brings up the point that you mentioned right at the start of the video. It's really useful if you want to create, if you have an application, for instance, that creates its own yeah. Windows event log files, you can put in the name of that application and send that application log data straight into the Sentinel -enabled log analytics workspace. And do you think, I mean, this could be scalable to something else, like, uh, you know, maybe if I have Exchange or uh, some other application, how do you think that this would scale to that? Yeah, that's a really good point. So if we had an application one that's writing events to the Microsoft uh, event log, we instead of putting in security, we could type in application one and then pick up any of the elements from application one and send those into the uh, log analytics enabled Sentinel workspace. So it's much more flexible than the MMA agent. So uh, we're going to do this exercise where we are going to add uh, event ID 4624 and 4625. And let's build our XPath query based on that. Okay, so to open a new instance of Notepad. Right, so just taking a reference of this, I can simply say I want data from the security event log. And so I do a security bang asterisk, and the uh, element name is system. And inside that, there's going to be event id now the very first time that i tried this i didn't know it was case sensitive and uh, i know that mark has had some experience with that mark would you like to share yes it can be quite frustrating if you make a small mistake because you use the format used in something like Custo inside the xpath and so troubleshooting it is uh just annoying so make sure you actually use the correct uh the correct syntax right very very important it, it is very unforgiving. It can eat hours from your schedule. 4625. And does this look okay to you, Mark? That looks great. All right. So let's do it. Save this. Add this expression. So you'll see that this uh, it checks, it validates the, uh, the XPath query. Uh, it just checks the format for it. It would not really validate your event IDs or the general structure that you would put in the XPath query. It would simply say that the braces are okay and stuff like that. So it's not really a very reliable source if you are looking for that, but it does check it syntactically. And here it failed because I did not really specify a name. So I can specify maybe test one because that is what I'm doing. Right, so when this happens, it's going to, uh, you know, install the AMA agent on the machine and it's going to upload a manifest which uh, asks us to collect this specific amount of data and nothing else at this point. So the end result is instead of sending all the security events or a common set of security events up, when we do a query in Custo for this machine, we're just going to see 4624 and 4625 logon events. So, yeah, while this is loading, we are going to initiate a logon. So I did a quick logon. Um, to the virtual machine so that to make sure that log on event is generated and uh, I'm currently logged in to it as you can see I'm going to also initiate a log off event right and uh, we're going to see we should at least see the log on logs coming in or the event ID 4624 coming in and let me just type the query over here Hey, in general, Andrew, it takes about two to three minutes for uh, log yep. events to reach from a machine to actually reach the log analytics workspace. Yeah. That will have made it in, but the log off, like you just said, probably won't reach the yeah. log analytics workspace for about a minute to, minute to three minutes. Yep. Be so what we're doing this. here is actually creating an event that just looks for, uh, or creating a query that just looks for events from this machine here, SOC VM1. And if we've set up our custom connector correctly, the only kind of events we should see are 4624s and 4625s. Absolutely, Mark. And I see yes. that we have some data, which is a good thing. And we see 4624s. There is. Uh, this 4625. Awesome. Yeah, we're beating expectations. Yep. Getting that data in in under three minutes. 
So just want to point out that log off events are 4634 and we're not seeing any of those showing up in the records. All we're seeing is the 4624 and 4625, the log on and failed log on, which is exactly what we requested in the XML statement we wrote. All right, that wraps up this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Please leave your comments below. And if there's anything else you'd like to see, um, send us a request.